Hi everyone, I'm Shaindi, the artist behind Shaindi Fine Arts. You all must know that currently I'm doing a monthly painting of each month's zodiac sign, zodiac themed painting. And this is my Capricorn painting. I'm a little bit late for this month, but it still counts. So it's a usual mixed media tutorial where I start off with watercolors and then finish with oil pastels. And uh, let's see what different happen this time like all of my other zodiac themed paintings i started off with a sketch and then a watercolor wash but this time it was not as smooth sailing as the other projects has been for some reason when i sketched it out it looked fine but once i started with watercolors just it wasn't just working the anatomy, it did not seem that the posture and position was the correct one. And also aesthetically, uh, since this is Capricorn, I wanted to, it to be very muted shades of earthy tones. I wanted it only to be greens, grays, and browns, and not the typical bright colors that come associated with oil pastels. And it was just working out. I tried to manipulate a little bit and change the anatomy here and there a little bit and tried to work it out for a while when i was doing the watercolor base coat or the watercolor wash but it just felt at one point of time that this is not going to work out eventually so i scrapped it and started all over again so there is my second attempt and this time i went horizontal from vertical and not that that really makes a lot of difference, but I made some adjustments in the posture of the um, woman and or whatever surreal creature creature I created. Uh, so I changed the posture, so adjusted the anatomy quite a bit, made a lot of changes in the composition, tried to balance the left and right um, to my liking and uh, started cautiously with the watercolor. Now, this time I wasn't going to do a lot of watercolor. What my intent was to just give me a visual guidelines, a color guideline to um, start off with my oil pastel. So I kind of spent like a, probably a half an hour with the watercolor wash. And you will see that even at the end of the entire watercolor wash, there is hardly any color on the paper and that that is totally intentional i just wanted a very very muted um, start with watercolors and even in the very end of the painting you will see that it is not like the usual well pastel uh, paintings where there is a lot of bright colors i tried to keep it a very muted palette and work with it so like my usual style i started off with the background first and mostly i started with the background and tried to come forward um, in some cases if I, here and there a little bit i have worked on the figure um, before i finished off the background that is just so i absolutely make sure that everything was working out together after my initial project that had to be scrapped otherwise i work from backwards to forward in the sky i added very little hint of clouds so what i did is i added some um, layer of uh, purple and blue and then toned them down with grays and whites and just put a hint of clouds in the sky it's not a very elaborate sky this time although the area of the sky is quite big but because i wanted to keep the pal uh, entire painting pretty muted shades i thought i wouldn't take uh, put a lot of details in the sky because that would definitely take away the attention from my focal point which is kind of on the lower side of the painting so once i put the uh, background a little bit of hills and water and swamp a little bit then i started working on my figure like i said i just wanted to make sure that everything was tying very well together um, so I started working on the figure. I put in the darker areas first or the outlines first with brown and purple. And then I came back with a, a few flesh tone colors. There was like a 
lighter brown kind of like a burnt sienna yellow ochre mix uh, color i don't exactly know what that color is called however i'm working with my 40 uh, pieces whole bind set this time um so i am solely and solely working with my whole bind and also this time i started working uh, wearing a pair of gloves more because i had a um, nick in my hand from a glass piece of glass and so i did not want any um, pigment or color to get in that but i really found this useful i do not mind the texture of gloves on my hands while working with oil pastel in fact it kept my hands absolutely clean and there was no oil pastel residue which kind of really was nice at the end and also whole uh, by not having casings of paper um uh, the color stayed much cleaner when i wore uh, the gloves for some reason or the other so after putting on the darker tones i came back with the mid-tone colors the flesh tints and whites and grays for highlights you can also see that i put a tiny hint of like a fin like uh, structure on her hand and uh, that is all that i'm going to do for the figure right now i'm going back to the swamp area so kind of want to create some rocks in the foreground near the fin and then at the background there will be a hint of water body so it's not exactly like a closed swamp i'm, I'm more like giving it a feeling of a narrow stream um which ended up in a swamp that's that's what the feel i'm going for not that it, the technical details are, are all that important but i'm just um paying attention to that way i added a lot of grays first to whether it is the water or the hills or the um, bushes shrubs i added a lot of grays first before adding any other colors whatever colors wherever i've used before adding that i used a lot of grays just so that no color becomes too bright especially the greens uh, uh, have a tendency of getting too bright and catching too much of attention greens and yellows so i wanted it to be very muted so i added a lot of grays for us so that even if i add some bright greens on top together once blended together it will have a very muted effect once again i'm coming back on the figure and working on the fins a little bit you will see that in the entire painting i first applied oil pastels I've deposited quite a bit of pigments of different colors and then I'm coming back with this uh, tool this is actually a clay shaper tool that clay mod people who work with clay models or clay use a lot but over a period of time I found that this is extremely good tool to be used for oil pastel blending I found it really really useful it helps in pushing the pigments of the oil pastels into the nooks and crevices of the paper especially in this kind of paper which has a little bit of texture um, like i'm using um, the cold press watercolor paper here and it has quite a bit of texture in this kind of paper this tool helps a lot pushing the pigments into the nooks and crannies of the paper and thus covering the surface of the paper a lot easily it is especially good in the initial layers when you want it um, want to cover the surface of the paper you're more working towards the coverage and it, it helps you get that very easily if you are not wanting to use odorless mineral spirits i i try to do every i try to mix and match different methods every now and then to make sure um, to understand what works and what doesn't and um, when i try to use other blending tools other than odorless mineral spirits i try to make sure that i understand how well to work it without odorless mineral spirits so that you know people who do not like working with odorless mineral spirits have an option to work with so this clay pusher tool clay shipper tool has been extremely helpful also some people have asked me if the blending stumps does the same thing yes 
it pretty much works the same way it's just that with the blending stem you have to push a little bit harder so it's a more amount of um, hand muscle work and um, that that's predominantly what the difference is and sometimes the blending stumps have a tendency of picking up pigments instead of pushing it down so that's a tiny bit of difference but it pretty much works the same way the um, guiding principle of both the blending stumps and this clay shaper tool is pretty much the same so you can work with either of the tools so you can see that after doing the shrubs and bushes um, in gray forest and then different shades of olive green, darker greens and indigo blues and pushing them down, I went on to the hair, laid a layer of brown, blue and black and then I'm coming on to the um, abdomen or lower body of the woman at this time i don't really know whether i can call this a woman or whether should i rather call this a creature because obviously it's kind of like a cross between a human and a mermaid and a mountain goat because i cannot um, um, clearly define what exactly it is but this is a creature that capricorn zodiac represents and that's what i was going for so anyways um after putting in the base layer and some details into the uh, uh, abdomen side i'm going back into the hair this time i first added some highlights into the sides of the hair with a lighter brown tone and then went back with the a darker brown and indigo to create the darker and dark and light effects in the hair. I'm closely following kind of a reference photo from which I'm taking the principle of where the light is hitting. I actually had to mix together two or three different ref different photos. In fact, I was working off five different uh, references for different things and. Um, how to make it work onto the horn of uh, the creature i first laid down a layer of brown in the darker areas and then came back with a lighter gray on the other side or the a side that is facing closer to the light and then kind of blended it together and then created highlights first with a lighter gray and then with a white while i was working with the horn i also simultaneously worked with the hair a little bit and then i came back to the final piece a uh, part of the body of the creature which is the tail fin and i really really enjoyed doing this part of the painting and i think this has this is giving me ideas to work into a lot of mermaid projects obviously since i'm working on all of my uh, disney uh, character disney princess uh, characters so there will be ariel and there will be a mermaid but i'm planning to do a lot more of uh, mermaid like creatures in um, the future and so this was a very good uh, starting point now you can see that once I did a little bit on the fins where I again went from the darker area, putting on the darker structures first and then to the lighter areas. I'm working on a little bit of details here and there, putting in a few rocks here and there. For the rocks, I started with gray, then I added dark browns and blues and then went on all top of all of that with a lighter gray and then used my clay shaper tool again to push the colors back in all again. And once the layer base layer was put on, I added a little bit of uh, details around other highlights with the lighter gray and that's all about the rocks and you can see that I put a lot of work into the swamp water or the stream water around the uh, tail fin area and uh, put the darker areas first and highlights again just like I do in all my oil pastel works and that is pretty much all about this painting don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like the painting if you have any questions let me know in the comments or your thoughts about this painting or the entire um, zodiac theme painting series in general I will see you soon thank you for watching